that was just kind of like very surreal. Shocking. Yeah. Shocking, yeah. We were in there and they said, well, let's just look at that first. And then they looked and they said, okay, well, the baby has a diaphragmatic hernia. Our first son was also sick with a diaphragmatic hernia um, and we just didn't think it would happen again. The referral call came actually from another physician here in Baltimore and basically just called me and said like there's a left side diaphragmatic hernia and this patient had a previous child with a diaphragmatic hernia. Under those circumstances, you know, we try to get her in relatively quickly because that's a complicated issue in itself. Dr. Rashad, obviously his his priority is to try to keep kids as healthy as they are when they're born so they don't need life-saving measures. So Dr. Prashat let us know that they had just started a trial program um, to try to increase the lung size of kids with CDH before they're born by doing a procedure called FETO. Fetoscopic tracheal occlusion involves looking into the uterus with a small camera called a fetoscope, placing a balloon that gets inflated to increase and expand the lung from the inside and prove the lung size and overall area. In congenital diaphragmatic hernia, the abdominal contents end up in the chest of the fetus and that interferes with normal lung development. If you block the baby's trachea before birth with a balloon, and that's what a fetal procedure is, you can reverse some of that lung damage and may potentially improve the chances for survival. We decided that we would rather William have a chance at an easier road than our first son had, and we thought if we can do something that will help minimize that path for him, then we're going to try it. The patient has to stay close to the hospital. You have to have facilities available that can accommodate that. And so the children's house is just across the street. They just walk across and they're right in the hospital. It makes fetal therapy also available for families that live far away because we can set them up there. Whenever a patient with a diaphragmatic hernia delivers um, on our service, we actually inform all the care specialties that may be involved with the care of the baby afterwards. And because we discuss all these patients beforehand, they're familiar with who that patient actually is. The prenatal, the fetal therapy program, actually feeds into our postnatal CDH program. So all babies with diaphragmatic hernia have a specialized follow-up because they may have multiple care needs. I've had four pregnancies and I've never had a team as involved as I did with um, the team at Hopkins. From the moment we found out through his stay in the PICU, they would come die every day at first, every week, just to check on him and see how I was doing. And even after William was born, they continued to advocate for him. It must be really rewarding for them to see kind of the end product of all of their work because they do so much before the baby is born. They're not always, you know, they don't probably get to see the long-term follow-up, but um, you know, I think they were really pleased with how he was doing. And so are we.